For those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Forrest, and it's Go Time. Now, uh, let's see, Go Time is an event for Oculus Go users, but if you're on another device, don't worry, all are welcome. You may pick up some useful tips that help the, uh, com the Go community in all space. There's a lot of Go users in all space. A lot of you, uh, you know, got Go's for Christmas over the holidays and stuff, you know, and you're new to all space, and we want to make sure you know how to have the best experience you can have in all space on an Oculus Go. But before we get going, just a couple of ground rules. I'm going to need everybody, if they can, to stay up off of the stage here. This way nobody blocks the stage. It gives me a little bit of, of room to, uh, you know, nobody blocks the display. It gives me a little bit of room to do the whole presenting thing. Now, you're going to notice there's a, uh, a microphone icon on your menu wheel on your lower left at the very top of your, right above that triangle, you'll see that microphone there. Uh, if that's clear, then we can hear what's happening in your environment. So go ahead and turn that to red. I see that Jessica's already done that. Thank you. Um, and basically, this means that if somebody comes into your space and says, hey, are you still on that? We're not going to, you know, we're not going to hear any of that. Or you won't face social room back in the campfire by, being known, by becoming known as the avatar that suddenly started barking or ringing or any of that kind of background noise. Uh, you know, so that won't be a problem. Don't worry about that. Now, just because you're muted doesn't mean you can't express yourself. All right. You can and should use this pink cheek smiley face that you see in your menu wheel. When you click on that, your emoji panel opens up in front of you. It's going to give you a lot of options to express yourself. If I say something deep and meaningful up here and you start to feel it real right close right here, it's supposed to build up. Of Willow, you can just let it out, let it flow on there. Maybe some ninjas come out behind from backstage, maybe there's backup dancers. Maybe we're breaking the go time, you know, the musical, and you're all impressed. You can throw up the applause that I live for. And I can take the moment to drink that all in. If I ask you a yes or no question, you can say, you know, yes by smiling. You can say, you know, frown by saying no. Or somebody does something funny, you know, you can throw up this uh, silly emoji here to show that you're laughing. That's cool. If you need to get my attention, you can throw your hand up like this. This is not the same as asking a question. This indicates that there is some kind of problem we need to address, right? Uh, like, for example, the display may burst in the flame suddenly because our moderators have a sense of humor, and that has actually happened a couple of times, believe it or not. You know, and they need to get off the stage. Oh, there we go. All right, cool. Uh, so what's going to happen is you can press an X to close this emoji panel. Right, uh, but it's a good idea to keep it open because it could just provide me feedback, lets me know how I'm doing. Uh, more importantly, it lets the people around you know what you're experiencing, right? So if the person next to you starts going like this, that means they found something funny. You may not agree, you may be like, well, <laughs> that's not funny at all, I'm going to stand over here. And you could totally do that because this is VR, right? All right, now let's get going here. Now this event, as I said, is for Go users, um, but you know, uh, in what it's going to spe specifically be about how these devices perform in all space. So, you know, uh, maybe, you know, if you've got the Wanda wrap and it's not taking you to the places you always dreamed of or your Oculus home is always a mess, we could, you know, we could talk about that stuff. But at the same time, you know, we're going to be mainly exploring how these devices perform in all space because there are some challenges. Speaking of challenges, I've been in bed for like the past uh, couple of years due to a medical condition. Right. So when my go came, I was like super excited to get this thing. Do you all remember that when you first put on that headset, that feeling of being transported to another place? I see a lot of nods. So you remember this? It felt good, right? I first came in, and I've been reading about AltSpace for a while. And the very first time I came, see a lot of hands going up. If there's any kind of problems, if some, uh, you have any questions, just hold up to the end, and we'll go over it then. Um, but yeah, so I first come into AltSpace. I've been reading about it for a while, and I first get in, and the very first thing I step out of the load screen, the very first thing I did was I looked up. Right, and that sky, it looked a lot like what I remember the sky looking like. And I was grateful for this. I was so grateful that I started volunteering for Allspace right away. And I very, actually, it was the first day. And what happened was I found I didn't have enough battery power to get me through entire events, right? So I would disappear, and then I'd have to charge it, but I'd have to find the host and explain why I flaked out, right? And I didn't like this, so I started asking questions. I started asking a lot of questions about, you know, what can I do to improve my experience in Allspace? How can I make it so my battery lasts longer? and, you know, increase my performance on it, right? And while I was asking these questions, I'd heard a bunch of things, all right? For example, you know, I heard that, that you know, I wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, to use this laser pointer here. They told me I couldn't do this on a go, and it turned out I actually could. That turned out to not be the case. I was told, too, that these slides up here, this display, I was told that I wouldn't be able to work these slides. That turned out to not be true. And despite having a background in presenting material like this, right, um, you know, they told me that my device wasn't reliable enough to host, and that turned out to not be true also. Right. So I, you know, found that there was a disconnect between what people thought it was like to be on the go and what it was actually like. All right. 
And, you know, you're going to hear some things like, and, and that's not to say that there aren't problems. There absolutely are. Um, but most of these problems are solvable. And the ones that can't be solved can be managed. All right. And there's two ways you could do it. You can take, you know, you can work with the device you already have on your head. We're going to go over some stuff today that's going to vastly improve your performance and your experience while you're in old space. Uh, but you can also mod make some modifications to upgrade your experience to exceed the limitations of your device. And those of you that have been here before, you know I can't stand this term. Because listen, if you hear this often enough, like if somebody tells you every day, I can't stand your shirt, right? You're going to realize like after a few days, you're going to think it's not the shirt they don't like. You're going to start feeling like it's you, right? There's some other terms they throw around like, um, you know, a weaker device. And you know, I've heard that one being thrown around lately. I don't particularly care for that one either, right? The Go is a great device to start out from. It's a, it's a great way to get an introduction, to get into VR. Uh, you know, especially if you suffer from like vertigo or anything like that, you know, or like dizziness, it can really help get you steady and get your VR legs, you know, not having to worry about the up and down motion. It's really, really great first experience. And I feel about the go the way most people feel about their first car. I love the device, right? So, um, you know, but yeah, so, you know, there's another term that gets thrown around all space a lot, and that's community. You, the individual, make up the community, right? Not what kind of device you're using. That device is just like a vehicle. You're not your headset any more than your house or your car. And I find it pays to remember that if you hear terms like that being thrown around a lot. All right, now let's start out with the device you already have on your head, right? Now, you may not know this, but your device uses power even when it's not in use. So, you know, let's say at the end of tonight, you know, you, you put the device on, on the table there and it's at 100% power. By morning, it's going to have less of a percentage. Now, the higher the percentage rate, the better your device is going to perform. So if you have 20% battery power, you're going to notice things like your screen is flickering, right? So it's your job to keep your device as close to 100% battery power as possible at all times, right? So like, you know, let's say you're out in the real world and you go to altvr.com and you look at the schedule and you think, you know, what am I going to do tonight, right? Well, you know, you're looking and at the schedule and you see what's coming up. Okay, you see we've got go time coming up. And you've heard, you've heard really good things about the host, right? You've heard that, you know, uh, you know, you heard he's got great hair, you've heard he's got these smart glasses, and he's got this shirt that you're starting to see everywhere, right? Uh, well, you know, what you're going to do is you're going to want to make sure that you plug your device in about an hour before the event starts, right? Give yourself enough time to get there, you know, make sure you have 100% power. And when you put the device on your head, once, you're, you're, once you start out and you come into VR, you have 100% battery power, right? And your device will, you know, loses power because it's always checking for, like, updates to firmware, updates to apps, things like that. Maybe it's got a pen pal on the other side of the world. Maybe your device has a secret life, you know, that you know nothing about, right? And, you know, so, you know, like basically, so what you want to do is when you first put the device on your head, right, there's a center button where you turn the power on. Well, you may not know this, but if you press and hold that button down, you're going to see three buttons appear in the air in front of you. That middle button is the restart button. And when you press it, the device will restart. And this is going to clear out all the temporary files that it's been using. Right? So it's going to give you really the best performance. So you have 100% power, you've cleared out the battery. I like to think of it as like clearing your mind. And then you come into all space. And you see, you know, step into that load screen, right? And you may have noticed in all space, right, that how important body language is in here, right? You're going to notice like in an event like this, a moderator comes up to you and they're shaking their head like this. You know, that means, you know, don't do that thing, right? Or, you know, maybe you see people coming up on the stage here and I'm, you see me waving my hand off like, get off my stage, right? You know, you see that. But, you know, there are going to be times in all space when your hand, right? Your real world hand might be here, but your avatar's hand is going to be up here. And this is going to make your body language so much less convincing, right? So you'll be conveying things that you don't mean. Like I could be waving, get off of my stage, but my hand in here in all space is going to be going like this, all right? And you're going to be thinking, I'm saying, hey, everybody, welcome to go time. But that's not actually what I'm saying, all right? So how do you fix this? Well, what you want to do is if you look straight ahead, all right, you're going to notice on the bottom of your controller, take a look over here, right? In the very bottom of your controller, and don't do the snap because if you disappear, I'm going to feel it. But you've got this bottom button right here, right? And that's like an eject button. That's going to take you out of all space if you only press it one time. But it does something else, right? If you look straight ahead, like everybody look toward me, like everybody look straight ahead, and, and you hold your hand, this you can do now, and you hold your hand kind of like at an angle by your side, like hold your hand out straight in front of you and look straight ahead, and you press and hold that bottom button, right, for about yeah, a few seconds, you're going to see a white circle spin in the air. And as soon as that circle completes, your hand is going to snap right into place. I just saw a few people do it. All right, cool. Now, what you want to do is take a good look at your hand and ask yourself, is this where my hand is in the real world? If it is, then you're good. If it's not, do it again until you feel comfortable. And only you can determine what feels comfortable for you. But you keep on doing this. And once you have it lined up like that, your body language is going to be a lot more convincing. You're going to find that having convincing body language in all space actually affects your relationships and your friendships in all space. So it pays to have this stuff lined up. All right. Um, let's see what else we got here. All right. Now, 
Also, uh, when I was having that battery power, one of the best pieces of advice that I got and what I didn't want to do was they told me to turn down my brightness. They said the battery would last longer. Now, I didn't want to do this because I wanted to have the best graphic experience I possibly could have in all space, right? And so very reluctantly, I said, all right, well, I got to do something. So I went to you know, my Oculus main menu. I went over to the right side where it's the settings, and I found brightness, and there's this big blue bar there, right? So every time I came into all space, I would turn down that brightness just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until finally there was no more blue left. And I came into all space, and I couldn't believe what I saw, right? What I saw was my graphics actually got better. All right, I went to this uh, space where I first learned to moderate. There's this tree in the corner there, and I looked at this tree, and it was like the most real I'd ever seen. It, it really felt like I was there, right? So if you turn down your brightness all the way, you're going to enjoy better graphics, better performance, but most importantly, your battery is going to last longer. And I found I was able to make it through entire events. And did you know people hang out after events? I didn't know that, right? And I started to I started to have a new problem then. I started to you know have the overheating issue when that happened, right? And uh, we're going to go over how to address that in a moment. But one uh, other problem that can happen, and Go users are known for this, right? What, and this is sort of why Go users get a bad reputation in all space. Let's say, you know, especially if you're new, you're in the campfire, right? And you're walking along, and it's a group of avatars in the corner, and they're all, they're all over here, and they're all talking with each other, they're all hanging out. And, you know, all of a sudden they turn and they face you, right? And you haven't said a word. And all of a sudden they come at you and they go, Are oh, you want to go? Are oh, you want to go? Right? And, I, you know, it doesn't feel great when that happens. But what they're experiencing doesn't feel too good either. What they're experiencing is they're over here, they're talking with their friends, like, hey, what's up? How's it going? You know, what are you doing? How you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Right? And what happens is all of a sudden they hear a voice, a very familiar voice. They hear their own voice coming out of your avatar. And they turn and they look and they see. And they see, you know, your hand out the side and they realize you're on the go and they, you're having the audio feedback issue that happens. Because what happens is the microphone on the go is very sensitive. So as the sound comes out of the straps, it comes up and gets picked up by the microphone and it gets projected out through your avatar. But in all space, we can't hear the sounds our avatars make, right? So we don't know what we sound like in all space. And so you're like broadcasting the sounds that they're making, all right, out of your avatar. And it can be a little unsettling, especially with that sound delay. And, and you know, fortunately, it's very easy to address this, all right? You're going to notice on the top left side of your device is two buttons, right? The leftmost button brings the volume down and just next to that, it'll bring the volume up. Whenever you press one of these, you're going to see these vertical bars appear in the air. Some will be solid, some will be clear. And what you're going for here is you want four clear bars on the right-hand side. This way your, your volume is four ticks away from the maximum. And once you're there, your volume is going to be at a level where the sound is going to be as picked up as easily from the straps. All right? And uh, you're going to find people are nicer to you almost right away because of this, because you're basically not going to be hearing themselves echo, and you can actually have a conversation. Um, one thing you can do to take care of this is you can add headphones to the device or even a pair of inexpensive earbuds. In my case, my wife went to the library. She got an audio book, right? And uh, they gave her a pair of free earbuds, and she came home, and she showed me she was excited. You know, she got this freebie, right? And they suddenly disappeared. They did. Right. But good news, they showed up a short time later, attached to my device, and they remain there to this day. Right. So, you know, got, got a handle on that. And after that, the only sound coming out of my amateur was my own. Occasionally, you'd still hear my wife saying, are you still on that thing? But, you know, we fixed that, too. We got her our own headset. Turns out she's a very gifted moderator. She's a really talented world builder in all spaces. Very lucky to have her. All right. So uh, let's see here. So that's one way you can take care of that. Now, uh, when I added the earbuds to my device, I started to think, you know, what else can I add into the device to improve my experience? Right? And I came up with what I call a Go Plus experience. And I call it that because once I did the things I'm about to talk about, I no longer felt like a Go user. Right? And the reason I say this is because I would go to like a performance intensive world and I'd be avatars, you know, fall to the ground or, or, or crash out and disappearing. And I would still remain there. All right? and, and even though I would get a little trapped sometimes, I was able to go things that other users couldn't. Right? And the way I did this is I'm going to tell you how I did it. Uh, and I'm going to have to talk about these products that I used to get there. But please, you know, bear in mind, these are not the only products that work. It's the ideas behind these products that work. But if you want to try any of them, I know the temptation is going to be to write them down, but it's very hard to write stuff down in VR. So what you can do is you can go to altvr.com anytime after, and you'll see up where it says, you know, it says events, and then right next to events it says channels. If you press on channels, uh, you know, you'll, get, you'll see a list of all the alt space channels, and we're at the very end toward the bottom on page two. You'll see Raven Hall events like it says up in that booth up there. Uh, you know, and if you click on that, you'll get taken to our event page. And on our event page, you can join our Discord to help out event, events like this. But more importantly, you're going to see on the left-hand side a list of all these products that I'm going to talk about right now. But even more important than that, you're going to see there's a subscribe button. We don't get paid to do this. Whenever we see that number go up, it makes us feel good. And it also lets Allspace know that you enjoy our content. So, you know, please do that. That would help us a lot. 
All right, now the first device we have at the top, the first product here is the Anchor Battery Pack. And I, I looked at this because, you know, my battery kept failing and Oculus says it's not a good idea to, you know, play it uh, while you're plugged in. And uh, but they say an external battery pack is okay. So I figured I'd start out with this and this is a, is a really good one. It lasts about 16 hours. Uh, you know, I didn't think I'd ever need to go 16 hours in New York because I like food, sleep. I've heard good things about water too, right? And uh, around this time that I got it, I had heard that a lot of people were having problems charging their device. And you'll notice when you plug in, it's like the, the wire is kind of tight, right? And all the in and out and the wear and tear, you start to think, you know, that eventually the contacts aren't going to be made as well and the char it's not going to charge as effectively. And I see that it's, you know, begun happening to people. But what I found was this MagSafe cable. That's the second product right here. Right, and what this does is one tip plugs into your headset, right, and then the other end plugs into the battery, right, the UV part plugs into the battery, and, uh, you know, and it's held in place by a magnet, and it turns out it's a great safety feature, too, because if you turn your head and the wire gets pulled, it'll just pop right off, right, and then you don't even have to take your headset off to fix it. You can just pick up the wire like this, and this way, instead of having your headset yanked, it'll just pop off. You pick up the wire like this, hold it up the side of your headset, and because of the magnet, it'll snap right into place. And when it does, it'll make this like kind of a thunk sound. And if your microphone's open, your friends are going to hear that sound. And they're going to say, what was that? And you're going to go, that's power. That's what that was. You don't have to say that. You're not required to. That's just something that makes you enjoy doing and I like to pass it on. Uh, so, yeah, that, uh, that solved my power issue. And, you know, I was able to last a lot longer in all space, but I started having this overheating issue. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this where, you know, all of a sudden I'm seeing a lot of knots, right? So, yeah, and you definitely see a lot of knots. Maybe Ollie's overheating, you know, uh, and that can happen. So uh, what I got was, and at this point, I'd heard that some people actually stick ice packs on the front of their headset. I don't recommend doing this because condensation, water, you know, electricity on your face, probably not a good idea. And the person I know that was recommending this, uh, actually, they went through two headsets, all right? So I don't think it's a good idea to do. I think it'll actually damage your device. Fortunately, there's another way to go. What you have is this USB AC infinity fan, right? And uh, basically, you know, you attach it to your headset, right? It's, 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 it's inexpensive too. It's only about $10 US, right? It's very small, you know, it fits right in the palm of your hand. And what you do is when mine came, right? Uh, I had to figure out a way to attach it to my headset because you want to make sure that the silver part actually faces the faceplate, all right? And the faceplate is installed by hand. So everybody experiences something different with the overheating. Like some people overheat every half hour, some lucky few never overheat at all. I knew one guy that overheated every two minutes, right? Actually during the first go time, we had at the end, when we take questions and comments, there was a guy who said that his half, his headset actually melted. It became deformed from the heat. And this made me really nervous. I was like, I'm going to solve this, right? So what we came up with here is we, so you attach this to your headset and some people do it in different ways. Some people like tie it on with string. In my case, my wife had these like hair bands and they suddenly went missing. Good news. They appeared a short time later, right? And after that, they, uh, they I attach them to the uh, sides of my device on the straps and I cross them over like in an X and I put them around these, uh, round of feet. And on the day it arrived, I was supposed to moderate for the meditation event. I don't know if you guys have ever been there. It's an incredible space. It's like on top of the mountain. You've got these bowls with the smoke coming out. You got some up streaming down through like the mist. It's really a great space. But for some reason, I would always overheat 20 minutes into it. It would always be exactly 20 minutes. So I figured this was a great place to test it out, right? So I go to the event and, uh, you know, I got the fan on. I got the external battery back. If you're a Star Trek fan, I felt like a bore because I had all these like, wires coming down, right? So much for being like mobile. But you know, um, but I was going to test it out. And I went up to the host and I asked him, I said, can you hear my fan? And he says, no, I can't hear it at all. So I turned it up to medium. I said, how about now? And he goes, well, I can hear it a little bit, but you know, it's, uh, it's not too bad. Uh, you know, and then I said, you know, I turned it up to full blast before I could even ask because I could definitely hear that you sound like you're in a wind tunnel. And I said, okay. So I knocked it down to the lowest setting and I'd see how long it'd last. All right. Spoiler alert. It did pretty good. Right. 20 minutes came and went and I didn't overheat at all. And then I wanted to see where the line is. So the event finished out. So I went to another event right after. And I went through that entire event. I still hadn't overheated. Then I went to another event all the way through. Didn't overheat. That's three events in a row. Didn't overheat once. Then I go to my home space. I hang out with my friends. I'm having a good time. And then for the very first time, I left all space by choice. I didn't leave because I had to. I didn't leave because I was overheating. I didn't leave because I was running out of power. I left all space because I actually wanted to. It was the first time that ever happened. It wouldn't be the last. After that, I became super involved in all space. I started hosting events. I started moderating events. I was all over the place, right? And I was doing it all on an Oculus Go, and you can too, all right? So what you can do is, you can, you know, try any one of these products. They really are a game changer. I can't recommend this, this stuff enough. It's really worth doing. 
you know, and it's not worth picking out. But th that being said, there were still problems being on an Oculus Go. And what you'll notice is the first one I'm going to talk about is a movement issue. And these, these problems are more like annoyances and that can be managed. The first movement issue that is going to happen is occasionally you're going to notice you're going to move in a direction that you don't want to move. So, for example, I turn to the left to say something to Hummingbird here in the campfire. What's going to happen, right, is instead of turning left, I'm going to go straight, right? And then maybe I turn to the right to say something to Bunny Twins here, and instead of turning right, I go straight, right? And then I can't see either one of them, so I go to back up. Instead of backing up, I go straight again, right? So then I panic, and I start banging on all the buttons, and what happens is eventually I get to a point, right, where I'm standing inside an admin. There's nothing more frightening than standing inside of an admin. I saw things. I saw the past. I saw the future. I saw things I can't even talk about. What I can talk about is how to solve this, right? To experience this, you're gonna you notice that your trackpad on your by your thumb there, right? It's very sensitive to you know moisture. It's sensitive you know to heat and of course touch. So you want to basically reset this you know because it's a touchpad, right? You want to reset this connection. And the way you do this is you take your thumb and you swipe it very gently without pushing down from one side to the other. It can be right to left, left to right. Doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with. I like to go from right to left myself. And, you know, so you swipe, right? And then as soon as you get to the other side, lift your thumb up into the air, cross over to the other side, come down again, and gently swipe it across again. You do this two or three times. You go swipe, 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 and then you come down in a direction that you want to move, and you'll be moving in the ways that you want to go, all right? I see some people try in and out there. You know, I see uh, Bree Memes is trying it out. And then you find that works, Bree Memes. That's good. You get a nod and working good. All right, cool. Nice to see that. Awesome. Thumbs up. Very cool. If you don't know how to do the thumbs up, it's easy. Squeeze your trigger, right, and take your thumb off the trackpad, and your thumb's going to go up, and you're going to be given, like, you know, a sign like that to say, hey, how you doing like that? Very cool. You know, awesome. Good stuff. All right. Now, uh, also, you're going to notice occasionally what's going to ha happen on the go, occasionally, especially if you're in a rush, like you got to host an event, you got to moderate an event, maybe you got a hot date, no judgments, I hear that can happen in here, right? What can happen is you're going to put your headset on, you're going to see a notice that says, can't find controller. Now, you, you know, and you know you put a fresh battery in it last night because sometimes when your battery runs out in your controller, that can happen. But if you have 100% battery in your controller and it still can't find it, maybe your, you know, the controller found out about your headset's secret life and they're no longer speaking, right? That can happen. So what happened is, uh, uh, you know, what you, the way to fix this is really super easy. You don't even have to take your headset off, right? What you do is you see on the wrist below your trackpad, there's two buttons, right? And you hold down those two buttons and don't let go. Right? As you're about four seconds, a little light's going to appear, a little white light's going to appear on your trackpad, but if you're wearing your headset, you're not going to see this. But what you will see is when you raise your thumb back up, after about four seconds, you're going to see that you've got your controller back. Right? And now, you know, you can go in all space and be on time. You're going to be standing in the load screen. You're going to be like, man, I sure am glad I went to go time. Now, Michael Forrest, he knew what he was talking about. You know, he told me to double down. I actually didn't say that part. That's how you remember it. You double down by pushing those buttons down. Right? Double down, and you'll be on time for your event. All right? Because you'll get your hand back. Another thing that can happen is you're going to see occasionally your screen is going to go dark. Now, Allspace has made a lot of improvements to, you know, increase performance. But this is still occasionally going to happen because everything you see in this room, like the stage, all of you, all these posters up here. I used to use Shrub at this point. And if anybody's seen Shrub, please, you know, go on our Discord and let us know because he's, you know, been missing. It's basically somebody was going to set up the last shows. Uh, but, yeah, occasionally all this stuff that you see in the room is going to stay inside your headset. So you can be back at the campfire and you're not even thinking about go time anymore, but your headset still is. Right? And what's going to happen is when that memory fills up, your screen is going to go dark. And when that happens, you, you know, you're not going to be able to see anymore. If your microphone's open, people will still be able to hear you, right? So, uh, you know, you can basically say, I can't see, I'll be back. And then you hit that bottom button there in the controller one time, and that's like ejecting out of all space, right? You'll get back to the Oculus home screen, you'll hit quit, and then you'll restart the app and then come back in that way, right? One of the best ways, one of the best things you can do is to manage this from an advanced position. So, for example, when this event's over, right, you know, you turn to your friend and you go, what do you think? And your friend goes, he was amazing. Did you see his hair? It was like he conditions it with plastic. He's just so shiny and he was just so dynamic. And I loved it. It was an amazing experience, right? And then you go, all right, enough, enough, enough. What do you want to do now? And then your friend goes, well, let's go to the campfire, right? And then you can go, all right, all right, I'll catch up with you in just a minute. That's all it takes. And now what you do is you press that bottom button on your controller, you eject out of all space, right? You restart the app that way. And then, um, you know, you come back in, you meet your friend at the campfire, wherever else you guys are going, but now you'll be doing it with your memory cleared out, all right? And you'll be less likely to black screen or, or dark screen or whatever you call it. You're, you're basically, your vision will remain intact because you can, 
you know, you can keep it going that way. All right, now, uh, see, I see that I'm kind of going over time here. So uh, I do have some tips for world building if anyone's interested. Do anybody want me to go a little bit over? You want to see the world building tips? We're going to go straight to the questions. All right, I've seen a lot of nods. All right, cool. All right, we'll keep going. All right, now I uh, moderate for a world building event about once a week. And when I'm there, I hear a lot of Go users saying that they can't build worlds at all. So it's simply not true. These devices are capable of remarkable precision. As a matter of fact, when this event is over, I usually take everyone flying at the Raven Hill Flight Academy. If you already know how to fly, you should still come because take a look around that world and you will see a world that was built in less than two days on an Oculus Go. I don't really make changes to that world for exactly that reason, because I like people to see that it was done on Oculus Go. There is a lot of worlds in all space built by very talented world builders that were also built on an Oculus Go. It also, while you're at the Flight Academy, you'll notice the portal to Lake Ravenhall. And that place, it took longer than two days because it's huge, but that place was also built on an Oculus Go, and it's worth checking out. It's a really beautiful space. Now, uh, where do people get the idea that you can't build on an Oculus Go, right? Well, I'll tell you. It becomes from this. When you go to mess with the world editor, you're going to notice when you go to grab an object, it's moving all over the place. And it takes a little while to realize that it's actually your head that's controlling the movement. And I don't know about you guys, but it's really hard to keep a level head in any reality, let alone a virtual one. Right. So what you want to do is if you go into the world editor, right, you're going to notice, uh, you know, that there's if you go into the world editor on the bottom, there's a, a checkbox that says lock rotation. Right. Once you click on this, now when you go to uh, squeeze your trigger on an object to edit it or to interact with it, what is going to happen is if you squeeze and release the trigger fast one time. Now you can move it around with your hand to adjust the rotation. And then when you get it in a place that you like, that's nice and level, you squeeze and release the trigger one time and it'll lock it right into place. Now, if you squeeze and hold the trigger, now you can move that object up, down, left, and right, okay? And now, also, you can also carry it around. So let's see what I do with that, that laser pointer over here. It is. Uh, so let's say that we're going to edit this laser pointer here, right? We're going to walk around. Let's put it on the, uh, let's see, we'll this where we're going to see it here. Let's come over here. We'll put it, put it right on the edge of the stage here, okay? Like that. Now, if this was the real world, that would be on the ground right now, right? So, you know, it would fall down. Uh, well, so what you would do is you would go into your world editor and you'll be a list of items on the left hand side and you'd look for the laser pointer. And next to the laser pointer, you're going to see a cogwheel, right? And you open up that cogwheel and it's going to open up a panel and then this panel is going to have numbers for position, for rotation, for scale, or the size, right? And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to play with these numbers a little bit at a time. So let's say that the, uh, the Z value says 20, right? And we move it to 19. As soon as we press enter, right, we're going to, what's going to happen is it's going to jump like right over to here. Okay, like right over, let's get this a little bit better here. All right, so it jumps this way. And so basically, if you change it by small amounts, what you're going to see, right, is that it's going to move in a direction. Now, the next item I place in the space, if I want to move the object that way, what do I got to do? I got to lower the number, right? And maybe I want to make the number, you know, higher, and it's going to make, move, make the laser pointer move in that direction. All right, and it's, uh, you know, basically you're going to experiment with it, and the more you do, the faster you're going to get. And I know, right, that, um, you know, uh, I just got a text message that I don't quite understand. Okay, but yeah, you got, oh, oh yeah, also if you are not a, uh, uh, if you're not, you know what I'm talking about in terms of the building worlds, you actually have to opt into the world building program, right? It's in your uh, general settings, you can actually opt into the world building, uh, and this will allow you to build worlds in all space. Uh, there's a world building event on Tuesdays, so absolutely worth checking out. Um, but yeah, so the more you play with it, the better and easier it'll get, the faster you'll go. And it gets quicker and quicker. And I know that little keyboard they give us where we message each other on, it's a little hard to, you know, peck out those messages. But you know what? It's a lot like when you play a video game. When you're playing a video game, the first time you play it, you're just thinking about the controls, right? But in a few days to maybe, you know, a week or so, you no longer think about the controls anymore. You just think about saving the world, right? Or crushing your enemies. That's a great way to spend a Wednesday, right? So it'll get easier and easier the more you do it, and you'll become a very talented world builder before long. All right, now, let's see, we are gonna be taking your questions now, and the way we're gonna do this is you're gonna see a button appear on your lower right-hand side called raise hand as if by magic. There it is, all right? If you have any questions or comments, or maybe you've tried some other products that you'd like to talk about, just, just wow, my voice just went. You guys hear that? Look at that, just, just stop. I did two events today, that can happen. Um, yeah, so you just press on that raise hand button, we'll see you appear on the list. Let's see, we already got some names up here. Uh, we got Disney guy. What's going on, Disney guy? You're on the air. Disney guy, where are you? My question is, um, yes. For Oculus Go, okay. Um, this is not really like, like, um, this is not really a question about how to perform, but it's about a game. Do you okay? Do you, do you think eventually rec? Do you think eventually rec room will come to the Oculus Go? 
Well, Rec Room is like expanding an awful lot. Like they recently became available on iOS. You can actually play it on your iPad. Uh, it's mainly a two-hand environment, but if they got it going there, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't branch out. So it's possible. But Rec Room is also very specific on bandwidth and performance as well. Uh, so is Altspace as well. So, it, you know, it's anybody's guess. If I answer that question, I'm just guessing. You know, it'd be cool to see. You know, it'd be neat if that happens, but there's no way to really know. You know, and you'd actually have to ask Rec Room. You know, maybe they'll tell you. Maybe they'll give you some inside information. And you write an article about it, and you make millions, and you become famous as that VR guy who got all the advanced scoop stuff. You totally do that. Let's see. What else do we have here? We have, uh, let's see, Zero Moco. Zero Moco, you have a question, comment, uh, anything yeah. like that? Uh, how What's do you actually edit the world editor? Uh, what you do is if you go into the main menu, right, that's a triangle button there, and you go to settings, you're going to see a category at the top that says general. You're going to see uh, enable world's beta, and you're going to want to make sure that's turned on. You also see participate in early access program, and if that's turned on, you'll have access to kits and objects that you can actually create, you know, things and bring into the worlds that way. Now, the world editor is okay. only going to work in spaces you control, like your home space, or you'll see that you have a starter world called Zero Moco 021105's world, you know, but this is a different event. This is the world building event uh, that's on Tuesday, so you should check that out. And we're going to go over all the specifics on how to make that a little bit easier. You know, so world building questions are best addressed there. Uh, let's see, we have any other questions here? We've got time for one more. We've got, let's see, what else do we have? We've got... Bree memes. What's going on, Bree? You're on the air. What's going on? Um, this is about the general headset of the Oculus Go. Um, how do you sure. adjust the headset, the headset so it fits the, your head premium? All right. Well, the, you, you have the straps that go on, and actually, I found the uh, I'm on the Quest now, and the headset uh, straps on the Go I found to be a lot more comfortable. There's a Velcro strap on the side that you can loosen the tension. I find it's best to have that, that pop loop that goes over across the top. They, you know, basically uh, have that a little bit more loose than the side straps. You don't want it too tight where it's going to cut off your circulation. But those Velcro straps are where you'll make the adjustments. And what's good to do is take your left hand, right, and hold up so your, your headset doesn't fall off. So you're holding your headset up like that, and then you hit the strap, you pull it out, and then you feel it. So there's just a little bit of tension. You don't want it too tight, just, just a little bit snug. I think snug would be a good word for it, right? You know, and you'll find eventually what's comfortable. You don't want it too loose where it's flying all over your face, but you don't want it too tight either where it's going to make you sick or uncomfortable, right? And you got to find every, you know, honestly, there's no real way to answer that question because it's like, it's the, what's comfortable is different for everybody. You know, that's like why, like, you know, when you go out and you buy a bed, there's like 15 different types of mattresses. There's like firm, it's very soft, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you got to find what works for you over time, you know, so just play with it. Don't be afraid to explore different, you know, sizes for the straps and you'll find what feels right for you and eventually you'll get it you know so let's see we got time for uh one more here we got uh awesome awesome you have a question and you are on the air what's up that's awesome Where i actually have two i actually what's up? have two questions the first one is a okay, general audio question um what would be the setbacks for charging while playing you know what that's the kind of use at your own risk. I've done it. One of the drawbacks to it is you're going to overheat a lot quicker. Oculus doesn't recommend doing it because when your device gets that hot, it can actually damage your device. Um, okay, if you are I'm using a fan, it. though, you know, it's it's like it's one of those things where it's against the recommendations of Oculus, but a lot of people do do it. You know, especially if you live in a cold climate, you might you know have some luck with it. What was your second question? Um, my second question was for like for shareable video, such as in the home area. There's yes. only an option to use Mixer. Is there any way that we could expand that option list? Right now, there you have the Mixer, and uh, before you have uh, YouTube videos that you can play by using, um, uh, what's it called, uh, Firebase app. Dot, I forget the actual address. You can get that at the World Building event, uh, where you can actually put a player in the space, but it's very broken right now because apparently YouTube will uh, decrease the amount of videos it's letting all space play through it and they're trying to work out Would that right now. Would things such as Netflix and desktop sharing be available in the future? Uh, they have they used to have Netflix in all space where you can actually watch it. Um, but again, you know, Netflix basically said, you know, that's not going to happen. And then also all space got acquired by Microsoft. So they cut that off. Uh, there are people who determine, you know, who develop workarounds for it. You know, so some of that is possible. The more you learn about world building and the more you learn about the different uh, type of scripting you can do through the SDK. You know, you'll find that a lot of things are possible that you might not expect, all right? Uh, but you. they also, you know, they sort of have their hands tied too because there's a lot of copyright stuff. 
Like, like, let's say it's okay for you and me to watch a movie, right? And let's say we're both in the United States and we want to watch a movie with our friend who's, who's in, uh, you know, who's in Europe. He may not be able to see that video because of, you know, different regulations and different copyright laws, you know? So, uh, okay, let's see here. We are going to be uh, heading out, but um, before we do, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And I want to ask you to please share what you've learned, if you've learned anything here today. Like if you're in a campfire and somebody says, you know, that they're constantly overheating, their face is melting and they don't know what to do, right? Tell them about the fan, tell them about go time, tell them about our products page, tell them about, you know, how to fix this issue because we're helping each other. That's how we help keep this thing going. All right. So now we are going to be uh, heading out here. You're welcome to come join us at the Raven Hill Flight Academy. If you have any more questions, I'll be taking them there. You know, and you'll notice through this back door here, there's a portal. We just walk right into it and we'll take us out into the load screen and then we'll come out on the other load, uh, the load screen on the other side. And feel free to hang out and enjoy the space as long as you like. And thank you all for joining us and I'll see you next time.